In our last session, I talked about the difficulties we encountered with the policy of a local realty company that would not allow one of the participants in the Real Love Correctional Program to rent an apartment with them, even after I carefully explained what a model tenant he would be to three different people in the company, including the president. For at least the third time, I acknowledge that this company has the right to set any policy they wish, but I also want to point out the effects of setting a policy that has no allowance whatever for the individual needs and differences of human beings. Such a policy really says this, first, we're not willing, we're not willing to deal with the potential problems of this group of people. Let somebody else do that. Second, we don't care about other people. We care only about protecting ourselves. Third, everybody is the same to us. Why? Because everyone exists only for the purpose of being used by us for our own advantage. Now, I point this out not to vilify this particular company. Far from it. I have done this very thing with other people many times in my own life. Many times. I have been unwilling to look beyond the surface characteristics of a man or woman and have thought only of my own needs and convenience. We've all done it. And in the process, we have caused such destruction, not only to the people we have disregarded, but to ourselves. Every time we are unloving, we make ourselves smaller, less happy. We make ourselves simply less. Ironically, a close relative of the president of this realty company called me on the phone only two days before to ask me a favor. He had encountered a policy of one of my companies that prevented him from doing something he wanted to do. So he called to inquire if an exception could be made. Of course, I said, we can work something out and we did. But I didn't share any of that with the president of the realty company. Why? Because I had offered my favor to his relative as an unconditional gift. Had I mentioned this to the company president, it would have turned my gift into a conditional trade. I would immediately have stepped onto the field of death where all such trading takes place. Oh, I might have gotten what I wanted in the short term, we often do on the field of death, but in the long run, everyone on the field of death, no matter how skilled, no matter how accomplished, dies. It's no way to live. So once again, the law of choice prevails. The company president had the right to make his own choices, even if they were unkind and unloving. And then my friend, the man on parole and I, had a choice to make. Should we feel victimized and complain about it or simply learn a lesson about choices and loving and move on? We chose to learn and move on. Within 24 hours, he found a place to live. Big deal. We didn't stoop to trading favors with anyone, and we didn't feel victimized. Life is very good when we remember that it's always about real love.